Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. You're killing me, man. I really like you. You gave me the inspiration to start my own finance channel. You know, try to talk about stocks, give different ideas. But you and a lot of other people are really wrong on this hedge fund thing. All right, my name is Michael EJ of Economic Stock Picking, and I'm just gonna address a video that I kind of told commenters and that I would do, and it's about why you should invest in a hedge fund, especially given their quote unquote low returns. Now, just for some context, Jeremy made a video from the Financial Education Channel, by the way, shout out to him. He made a video kind of dogging hedge funds. He's done it in the past, and it was more about hedge funds are finally doing better than the stock market for the first time in about a decade. You know, they're finally doing better. And the guy who lost the bet from Protege Partners lost the bet to Warren Buffett over the 10 year bet on hedge funds versus the market, which wasn't a bad bet, but I, the way he set it up, the way, I mean, he, he didn't get the memo. He, I, I, I get it. I mean, who knew the stock market post 2008 just run up? I mean, the first year he was right. 2008 happened, he was feeling good. Maybe he expected, you know, just a normal economic cycle, a normal pull down in stock market. It didn't happen. He lost the bet. Warren Buffett won. He looks, of course, like a genius, whatever, whatever. But it doesn't really address what's going on with hedge funds and why you should invest in them. Why should you invest in a hedge fund? Because it seems like it, it's a stupid idea. It does seem like a stupid idea. When you just look at returns, especially over the past 10 years, post a um, global financial crisis, it looks like it's a bad idea. But there are functions for, your, for a hedge fund or hedge fund style investing within a portfolio, especially at a smaller allocation. Now, the original reason to invest in a hedge fund and the reason that you'll normally find if you look it up online is protection in down markets. And that's still a reason, that's still a reason, but it's more of a secondary reason now. The primary reason to invest in a hedge fund is, excuse my handwriting, this, this might get ugly. All right, now, if you've seen my other videos, this handwriting can get pretty bad. But I, I have to do this, I have to do this. The reason you invest in a hedge fund is alpha generation above the risk levels, above risk exposures, alpha generation. How exposed are you to the market and how much better are you doing with that exposure? It's tough to visualize. So let me, let me point you a, a picture. Let me give you a little bit of an example. You know, you got a million dollars to invest. You have a million dollars to invest and let's say your goal is to consistently beat the market. And let's say, hey, the historical returns of the stock market is 10%. Hey, let's just use that. We expect that going forward, 10%. You look at a hedge fund manager, and I'll use an equity long short manager. They're the most basic kind. Um, and you pick a hedge fund manager that has a low net exposure. Let's say 30%. Now, when I say 30%, that really means if they've taken similar market risk, a 0.3 beta. That's what it really means. So for every dollar they invest going long, they invest 70 cents going short. And that's their average net exposure, about 30%. Now let's say that you give 30% of your money, $300,000 to that manager. Now you put the rest in ETFs. You put the rest in a passive index fund or a passive ETF tracking the S&P 500 and then in your expected return is 10%. If the stock market because it's 30%, 30% is given to the hedge fund. If that was given, all of it was given to passive ETF, if the stock market goes up 20%, um, the, the, the hedge fund's only supposed to return about 6%. And it's vice versa. Stock market comes down 20%, hedge fund only supposed to reach, you know, he's only supposed to lose 6%. That's the original function. Now let's say you found a manager that in that 20% up year, with 30% net, they return 12%. They still didn't beat the market, but based on their risk exposures, they return 12%. And vice versa, when the stock market is down 20%, instead of just losing six, they barely lost anything. They lost like two or 3%. In both ways, they generated alpha, above the risk levels, above the expected risk taken in the market. And 
the further it more, think about it from this kind of barbell approach of go in small, small portion of your portfolio in the hedge funds, and then the rest goes passive. At a 10% expected return, either you go all in on, on, the, uh, on the ETF, 10%, or you can give 30%, same scenario, and instead of expecting 3% for that 30% allocation, you expect 6%. And then the other 70 is 7%. So the difference between expected rate of return of 10% a year versus 13% a year. And that's kind of how you can consistently generate alpha in the markets. You don't have to pick, it's tough to do it long only. It's much easier to do it this way, set it up this way. It's kind of a barbell approach. Another word for it is alpha transport. Um, so in setting up your portfolio in this manner, either when the stock market goes up or goes down, you still expect to win. You st still expect to do well. And the difference between 10 and 13% is double the amount of money in a 20 year span. It just, you just see it just com coming up. So that's the real reason to invest in a hedge fund. Now let's broaden this out. Let's, let's look more at who really invests in hedge funds. I mean, yeah, you got a lot of family offices out there and rich individuals, but it's really the, the institutional investors, the real money. Pension funds, endowments, foundations, maybe some insurance companies, but we're gonna focus mainly on the pension funds and endowments. Those are two I know that mostly are involved in hedge fund space. Now, with them, they do have a little bit more of a absolute return focus. I mean, they just do. I mean, let's take an endowment, for example, which how, how much you generate in returns is used in the budget of, for example, a college, of a university. So you need to hit seven, eight percent every year. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's much easier to go in front of a board of directors, even when the stock market is up 30 percent and you only return half of that versus the stock market is down 30 percent and you can still say, eh, we lost a little, we lost about a percent or two, but it's not nearly as bad as that. So, the, you know, that downside protection is still there, but that's kind of the train of thought. It doesn't really matter. You gotta stay positive no matter what. So this kind of idea of investing in hedge funds is staying positive no matter what, protecting from the downside and based on risk levels, generating alpha above that. And also, just a side note, you know how hard it is to find long only managers that consistently beat the market? Oh, you already know the answer. They're not out there. It's really hard to find a long only manager that does well thick and thin. What one thing I've noticed is that usually if you look at a growth manager does well in bull markets, give it all away when things hit the fan. And a more quality value guy, even a Warren Buffett, who's trailed the markets by the way, let's not forget that since this bull run, he, he hasn't been doing as well, but regardless, Buffett style investors, value investors, they trail in a bull run, you know, it's okay. They're fine because they know when things get bad, they'll be right there. But net, net, I mean, you're kind of doing as well as the market over the long term. I mean, I mean yeah, you see all these studies about value, but in my honest opinion, I mean, you got to look at some of those companies these studies look at. These are pretty crappy companies and, and you needed a lot of volatility to get there. Or in this today's age where growth investing is winning, I mean, yeah, th things are going well, but as soon as the next recession hits, as soon as stock market gets lumpy, they all fall, they all fall. So why even deal with that? Why invest in a company, well, why invest in a manager that you know is gonna do well in one market environment and struggle in the next? Whereas you can just invest in a hedge fund where you expect to do better than their risk exposures all the time all the time. And you got different kind of hedge funds out there. You got not just the equity long short, you got the equity market neutral, very interesting for every dollar they expect to go up, dollar bet going long, they have an equal dollar bet going short. Very interesting. So in reality, they should have 0%, but somehow they get to three, four, 5%. You also got macro investing based off of things happening in the market, company specific events, dealing with maybe merger or acquisitions or merging acquisitions, maybe activist investing. Um, you also can do this in other asset classes. Derivatives is one. You got, and then you got even some other things like reinsurance, 
catastrophic investing. I mean, there's different ways you can you can make this happen and you can earn consistent returns. Yeah, a little bit uncorrelated to the market. That's part of the goal too. But more specifically, are you generating alpha above your risk exposures? Now let's let's take it broader. Let's even look even broader from a portfolio perspective of let's say a $10 billion institution investor. So that's that's one of the larger endowments. Maybe um, you might be a large endowment, maybe for a college, or you might be a small pension fund. That's that's about $10 billion. Your expected rate of return year over year is 8%. That, that sounds about reasonable. Well, I don't know if it's reasonable, but that sounds like a normal level of expected rate of return. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to do this barbell approach, which some institutional investors are, are, are tinkering with. I'm going to put 1%, well, 1% expected rate of return, 12.5% of the $10 billion, $1.25 billion. I'm going to put that in hedge funds and put the rest in a passive index and maybe some other combination of other investments, maybe private equity, um, maybe investing in real assets to get to get the 7%. So you get the 7% with the rest. And then instead of just getting that 1% expected rate of return, you're able to get 3% because above risk levels. I mean, you're gonna be investing maybe more equity market neutral, maybe more stable value um, type of hedge funds because you don't want the fluctuations with the market. You really don't even care about the markets at all. But hey, they give you 3%, you got the 7% anywhere else, you're beating that expected rate of return. And that beat on $10 billion, 10% versus 8% over 20 years, is 20 extra billion dollars. I mean, that's the. this is the reason why you invest in hedge funds. No, you do not give all your money to a hedge fund. No, not gonna happen. Doesn't make sense. Not at all. I mean, that's what some people are doing. You don't give a large chunk, a disproportionate amount of money to the hedge funds. But giving a small portion of your um, portfolio to a hedge fund or hedge fund style investing, really more absolute return focus, paying attention to risk levels, you're gonna go a pretty far away. And this is the function now of hedge funds in the institutional investor space. I just wanted to share that kind of idea that's going on on that side, because I mean, hey, it's easy to knock on, you know, kind of hit on hedge funds. It is. I mean, how are you guys not doing so well? You got, you charging these, they're not as ridiculous as they used to be, but still high fees, still charging high fees, and you guys aren't delivering. Well, part of it too is, you know, things going on in the market. If you want to make the bet that, hey, hedge funds, their opportunities don't come anymore, markets aren't as volatile, passive investments taking over, I get that. But I still believe you need to have like an absolute, kind of focus in your portfolio. And that's the function of hedge funds, especially in this kind of barbell type of approach. That's all I have for you all today. Please let me know what you think of this idea. Let me know if you agree, disagree, thinks I'm crazy. Also still another shout out to Jeremy from the Financial Education Channel. You have inspired me to continue to go down this road. I just had to correct you on this one, my man. All right guys, to the next one, peace.